Right, moving on to the inner gearbox cover. Uh, we need to put all the various bits back on. Uh, to begin with, we've got the two bearings. That's the outer main shaft bearing and the outer lay shaft bearing. Now, I have to say that this outer main shaft bearing is probably the most knackered, <laughs> one of the most knackered bearings I've ever seen. That is one gone bearing. So we are going to be fitting a brand new bearing, obviously, for that. And this is a needle roller bearing for the end of the lay shaft, which I tend to renew these as a matter of course, because they can be damaged uh, getting them out. And this one is very stiff and jams anyway, so I wouldn't, you know, I just wouldn't put a, an old needle roller bearing back in. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to heat the case up, uh, put the uh, put the output bearing back in in there. It seems to want to go in already. And I've got a drift to put the bearing in with, which is a large box spanner. And then to finish off, I can just uh, use that because it needs to be down. There is a uh, to get this fully home. There is a actually a ring, uh, a groove inside, and. And there's a uh, circuit that goes in that, so the bearing has to be down. And so in order to get it fully home, I'll just finish off with that. Okay, and then we've got the uh, lay shaft bearing, and that comes in from this side. And again, it just needs to sit proud of the inner face so that it will hold the thrush washer in place but below the level of the thrush washer so that the lay shaft doesn't run on the, on the edge of the bearing, but it runs on the thrush washer. Okay, so I've got, the, uh, I've got both these new, these are the old ones. I've got both the new ones in the freezer. I'm gonna start heating up the, <clears throat> the casing and then uh, what have I got putting them in? Okay, uh, I've got the this nice and hot now. Bearings out of the uh, freezer, and hopefully the little bag will go in. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm putting some uh, bearing seal on it because uh, it seemed to be uh, seemed to want to go in a bit easy, and I'm not sure. There's slight signs that maybe it's been spinning. It's difficult to tell, um, but. Uh, Lettering outwards is what I still do. Yeah. So uh, I think it was right to put the, um, some bearing lock on because I've got a feeling that bearing might have been spinning in its housing. Okay, got the... Uh, hoo -hoo -hoo. That's the lay shaft bearing out of the freezer. I think that's probably just about perfect, the nail up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, the bearings are in. A um, couple of things. 
Um, I've put the big circuit back in to hold the uh, main shaft bearing uh, in place. I'm going to give that a bit of oil now. In fact, it is pre-oiled, but um, I'm going to give it a bit of oil now anyway. Um, the uh, sorry, that's better. Um, yeah, and I've made sure that the opening to the circuit is away from that broken gap, and I think everything's fine there. It is just, it is just above the bearing that is broken. Oh, and another thing is, I suddenly realised, of course, I've done this for a while, that if you drive this outer uh, lay shaft bearing in from the outside, if you get it flush with the casing, then it's automatically the right height. So there's no need to, as I did, drive it in from this side and work out the height. If you drive it in from the outside till it's flush with the casing, it's automatically the right height, unlike the inner bearing, which has to be driven in uh, uh, from the, the, this direction as it were and I've then located the uh, thrust washer so it's on the pin there and sitting around the lip of the, uh, the, the bearing to hold it in place and then to actually hold the thrust washer actually in place whilst I fit everything I have uh, super glued it just a little touch of super glue just here and there just hold it in place so that it doesn't fall out is that in the manual etc no because of course i didn't have super glue that's my excuse normally they say put a bit of grease on or something but hey i put a bit of super glue on and it's sorted okay uh we're gonna add a few other things now so the next thing i'm going to do is this is like the boss that the neutral indicator switch sits in it's a complicated affair i think it sort of has to be the neutral switch indicator because it's a bit of an afterthought, you know, they've got to add it to an existing gearbox. So um, so there's a boss and then the actual switch then screws into the boss. Now the boss is weird because it only has two flats on it. Now for the life of me, I don't know why they made it like that. Why it isn't a normal nut, I honestly don't know. Because it's so hard to get a spanner on because you can only get a spanner on in two places. Now it's hard enough now on the bench doing that, but when the engine's in the bike, it's virtually impossible because the frame rail comes about there. So, you know, trying to get a spanner in past the frame rail to, that you can get onto just these two flats is, you know, nigh impossible. So why they made it like this, I don't know. There's probably a reason, but I don't know it. I can't think of it. Anyway, I'm going to put this, screw that in, and uh, because it's just easier to do it now whilst it's on the bench. Even, even you know, even with the engine out, etc., there's still a pain to do it. Now I'm going to put some uh, Loctite on the threads, as ever. Uh, once again, not to, to stop it falling out, but to, to act to, to stop oil getting down, sneaking down the threads. And there's a uh, fiber washer. Okay. So I'll just put that in. Because the only thing you can get on this nut is a 5.8 spanner, an uh, open-ended spanner. You know, you can't get a box spanner on it, you can't get a socket on it, you can't get a ring spanner on it. You see, like even on the bench, I'm struggling now to try to get a spanner on the flats. And when it's on the bike, with the frame in the way, crikey, it's a nightmare. I, I, I have no idea why they made it like this. I really don't. I'm sure there's a reason. Maybe somebody knows it, I don't. And if you don't get this tight, then... It's going to leak. On the other hand, you know, you get it tight and then you want to take it out again in the bike for some reason. Forget it. Yeah, that's getting tight. There we go. So 
So that's the boss or adapter, or whatever it's called, that is going to hold the neutral indicator peculiar to T160s. Because of course they didn't have a neutral indicator on earlier bikes, so they had to sort of like adapt in the in the way of British motorcycles in the late. You know, as, as things were beginning to go pear shaped, they had to panic and they hadn't got time to make a new gearbox and so on. They just had to adapt what they got. So they had to adapt this to fit a neutral indicator and they had to adapt the gearbox to left hand gear change, which is difficult with the gearbox on the right of the bike. Okay, uh, we're now getting ready to fit the uh, sort of gear selector mechanism. This is the quadrant or butterfly quadrant as it's known for obvious reasons. And that goes in there and then is held in place with this shaft. Um, so we put it in and uh, let's get this right. The, uh, the big curve, the sharp curve goes to the bottom. You don't have to worry too much because if you do put it in upside down then you'll find that it won't, you see it won't turn, that's a maximum it will turn, this, this won't go anything like near the bottom. The right way up then this travels see this side it goes all the way up all the way down okay so uh, I'm going to oil the shaft I've already tested the shaft just to check it's smooth in, in here because I'll tell you why this is a weird I, again this is a bit weird so the quadrant goes so it runs on this shaft right but again I don't understand this it doesn't run on the shaft it's actually got, you actually put a, a cotter pin, a split pin through there and through the shaft. So the whole shaft rotates. So rather than the butterfly spinning on the shaft, the whole shaft turns in, in the housing. Now, I don't, again, I don't know the rationale for that. Because in my mind, you just put the shaft in and then have the butterfly spinning on the shaft. But anyway so uh it's very important to make sure that this shaft obviously is turning freely in the case before you do the assembly because the whole thing's going to turn oh yeah so there, there's three grooves uh, the first groove uh, has got the little o-ring seal on it that's the old one the second groove is where the split pin is going to go to stop the shaft from falling out and the third one i think i was thinking of like an indicator uh groove so that when you've got the shaft in you know it's in the right place because you can just see that groove and that allows you to put the split pin in okay that's going through Get the butterfly in the right way up. Yeah, so I know that it's fully home now. So then what I've done is I've turned the shaft until I can see through. So I know that the holes are going to line up. So I'm then going to select a, uh, hopefully select an appropriate split pin. Should I check this before I put the shaft in, shouldn't I? What size split pin will go through the hole? Yeah, that's fine. And then I'll open the split pin out the other end. Yeah, that's better now. That's a, probably a bit of grit or something in there. It's okay. Right, then the last thing I want to do is then put another split pin in here. In here. To stop, uh, to hold the shaft in place. I'm not quite sure why that's in there. Because there's no way it can come out. Because of the butterfly. But there is a hole there. So we'll put a split pin in. There. 
and as I say this uh, this split pin goes in that empty groove to stop it coming out although it can't come out because the butterfly is in with the split pin as well right then that's the uh, inner casing all prepared ready to go on we've got the uh, <coughs> outer bearing for the main shaft outer bearing for the uh, lay shaft we've got the now we've got the butterfly quadrant inserted ready to ready to uh, engage with the cam plate we've got the neutral sort of boss neutral indicator boss uh, bolted in and um, we've got the uh, thrush washer in place ready to go on so what we're going to do next is we're going to be putting this inner gearbox case onto the uh, onto the gearbox and we're going to be indexing the gears oh yes indexing the gears and what we're going to do is we're going to completely demystify the whole this whole thing about indexing the gears and what sort of arcane ritual that is it's actually pretty straightforward and so we'll go through that and hopefully make people feel an awful lot happier about indexing the gears